There are calls to suspend or scrap Melbourne's free tram zone to reduce overcrowding as the city returns to work. The state government is also being encouraged to consider discount fares to support more travel outside of the peak. Andrew Lund has the details. The free tram zone is popular with passengers, but as the government tries to cut crowding, the Public Transport Users Association says that popularity could pose a problem. They should be reconsidering uh, how it works and looking at uh, either suspending it during the, the COVID crisis um, or getting rid of it altogether. Before the pandemic, it was blamed for significant overcrowding. Yarra Tram says the introduction of the free tram zone in 2015 resulted in a 30% increase in CBD patronage. Last year, an average of 49,000 trips were taken each day in the free tram zone, almost half of the 101,000 tram trips through the city each day. Everyone likes a free ride, but ultimately the taxpayer is paying for that free ride. And, and in particular, paying tram passengers do not benefit from the free tram zone. You can't take this away from them now. Nine News understands the government has contemplated suspending the free tram zone as part of measures to allow a full return to work. We'll continue to monitor patronage, but there are no plans in place to remove the free tram zone. A parliamentary inquiry is currently examining whether the free tram zone should be extended, but it's also looking at the potential for changes to ticket pricing across the broader network. Once we get outside the peak during the day, we should be either dropping the price, getting rid of the, the fare, to encourage people to go outside of the peak periods. But we'll certainly look at a range of options. A final decision on how to spread the loads on trains, trams and buses is expected by the end of the month. Andrew Lund, Nine News. A major development in the investigation into Jeffrey Epstein, the United States reportedly taking an extraordinary step to try to question Prince Andrew. Ben Avery's at Buckingham Palace. Ben, what's happened? Well, Pete, there are reports that federal prosecutors in New York have now formally requested to speak with Prince Andrew about his dealings with the deceased pedophile Jeffrey Epstein. Those authorities have filed what is known as a mutual legal assistance request with the United Kingdom Home Office, which could lead to one of two things. Prince Andrew could be required to provide a written statement about his dealings with a billionaire, or he could be required to front a United Kingdom court in the next few months to give evidence. One thing we do need to point out, though, is that at this stage, Prince Andrew who is being treated as a witness in this investigation. He is not the subject of the inv investigation and certainly the 60-year-old has always denied any wrongdoing, Pete. Ben Avery reporting from London. Thanks, Ben. It's a big part of our past, but new research is helping ensure playing in the street remains part of our future. Residential streets will be closed to traffic in a thousand locations so more children can roam safely. More on the social and physical benefits of the initiative later in Nine News. New Zealand is officially COVID-19 free after the last known patient, an Auckland woman aged in her 50s, recovered from the virus. The country has had no new cases for 17 straight days and from midnight will lift all social distancing restrictions except for border measures. Scott Morrison is campaigning for a trans-Tasman travel bubble to start as early as next month. 